I'll take the high road and you'll take the low road, but we'll both regret it and wish we had taken the 134 instead. <laughs> Welcome to freeways. Oh boy. Already <laughs> off the top. I would never take the 134, okay? The 170 <laughs> streets until you get to the five. You take, to the, you take oh, Burbank Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> so getting around in Los Angeles has never been easy. We know this. But whether it was having to travel for a week to get from the ocean to the valley on a dirt road <laughs> or having to travel a week to get from the ocean to the valley on the freeway, the city's always been trying to come up with better ways. And as I found out this month, there's no such thing as a better way way. Mm-hmm. Nothing, you'll see a common theme here of noth- nothing we do works. Nothing helps. Even by the late 1800s, when cars and public transportation barely existed in the city, the roads were already too crowded, and that only got worse as the 1900s came along. The state's first major step towards fixing this problem was on January 2nd, 1912. They created the California State Highway Commission to try to address these issues. The, mm-hmm. It's still around today. It's now known as Caltrans. Oh, so geez, they started dude. in 1912. Wow, okay. They needed it that early on. The first car came Came and they said we gotta, oh, we gotta regulate that thing oh no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> not on my road <laughs> which doesn't exist yet not in my dried up riverbed <laughs> but when it came to dealing with los angeles those guys were and they have forever since been in over their heads they couldn't deal with it from 1914 to 1922 alone the number of vehicles registered in la county quadrupled <laughs> which it meant from one to four <laughs> more and more cars just kept coming and they were clogging up the trolley system which was just causing even more traffic yeah. so a new system was needed so they tried desperately to fix these problems by widening streets. That was the first step. Let's make the streets wider. I got it. No more sidewalks. <laughs> this isn't going to be a pedestrian town anymore. It's going to be like cars land. So they tried widening the streets. More cars could drive through it. But just like today, by the time any of those projects were finished, there were already so many new cars on the road it was, that it wasn't enough yeah. even then. So it's like trying to dig a hole at the ocean and then like a wave will come and fill yeah. it. And you're like, son of a yeah. chocolate blue. You know? <laughs> son of a deer. <laughs> so nobody was happy with this and this it was killing the appeal of the city. City. This is no longer the appealing place that to drive. People, I came here to drive, not to came, park. <laughs> I came here to drive, not to be stuck in traffic, whatever that means. <laughs> whatever people like Harrison Gray Otis and all those boosters were working so hard to get people come to LA, come to LA, they and they get here. there. Yeah. yeah, you're here, and now, well, this is terrible because yeah. we're here. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is us being here. Maybe LA should look at itself and see that we're the problem. Let's all just move away and let Ohio have us. As early as 1913, people were clamoring for the city to make good on its promise of being a paradise and provide them with an empty road that they could take them from the mountains to the sea, but that wasn't happening. In May 1924, a plan was proposed by Frederick Law Olmsted of the Olmsted plan, which we covered tangentially once, (laughs) Harlan Bartholomew and Charles Henry Cheney. AKA Dick, they would call him. <laughs> this plan was called the Major Traffic Street Plan, mm-hmm. and it was a path to deal with all this new traffic by widening and extending certain major streets in the city. But like we've already seen, this may have prevented a so-called Carmageddon, but it still didn't fix the problem at all. And remember this plan from 1924, because it'll come back often. Okay. Things were getting desperate, so some people started looking towards an experimental new method of traffic control referred to as motor parkways or motorways, or okay. as we now know them, freeways. freeways. That's another thing to think about. Like it wasn't, an obvious thing of like, well, just to build a huge, super fast road, yeah. that thought wasn't necessary until like a hundred years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird to think about it. These were roads designed only for cars, yeah. which was something unheard of. Like, why would cars need their own road? There's like six of them. Why didn't you know? <laughs> I know. They're always jammed up in the same well, now there's, section. Now there's 32. <laughs> Since you started that sentence, there's 32 new cars <laughs> on the road. These new roads, there were no houses or businesses along it, no pedestrians walking on sidewalks. These were paved roads for cars, by cars. <laughs> to drive fast on. People had to wrap their heads around this. Like yeah. it didn't it didn't make sense. They know it by reflex, but to try to explain it to someone who's never seen one before, I wouldn't know how. Yeah. Just go. It, like it's fast. it's like it's kind of like watching the ape, the man ape from the beginning of 2001 invent weapons. That man ape's name was Frederick Law Olmsted <laughs> and Dick Cheney. <laughs> and he was the first one to murder. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 just a weird Crazy, thing yeah. to to think about. Anyway, as a side by here moving forward to give what I understand to be the difference between a highway and a freeway. This is a this it. is an important thing. A freeway has no intersections or tolls. Got it. And they're grade separated, meaning they're either higher up or lower down than the rest of oh, local traffic. Okay. And the people and businesses located next to the freeway have no personal direct access to that road as opposed to a highway where there's often stoplights and mm-hmm. you could just make a right and you pull up into your house. Exactly. It's an uptight street. Uptight it, street. It follows strict rules. It's not just anything 
thing goes on a highway and yeah. oh here's look a hidden driveway exactly. oh this is where dick cheney lives <laughs> it's not that sort of thing so around this time new york detroit and chicago uh they had fork spot but they also were already <laughs> experimenting with parkways that were almost like modern freeways but okay. there was a mostly overlooked proposal in that plan from 1984 uh-huh. uh, 19, 1924 1924 yeah in la i told you about for parkways that were elevated and separated from the rest of the city which was something nobody was doing and it turns out neither did we for many many more years the traffic problem it just got worse and worse until 1933 when a man named lloyd aldrich took over la's bureau of engineering and as it turned out he was a fan of this experimental motorway parkway idea so on november 12 1933 the city's first step towards freeways was made in the form of a road called ramona boulevard you know about ramona boulevard a little bit from the reading Huh. Oh, weird. You sure you weren't supposed to read that? Hmm. Yeah, I thought I had put a parental block on here. <laughs> Every time I open the book, there's pages ripped down. Yeah. <laughs> Redacted. <laughs> Redacted Boulevard. <laughs> it went from Aliso Street downtown under the Macy Street Viaduct, then east for four miles to around Garvey Avenue and Monterey Park. That's okay. where it went. It had no stop signs or stoplights along the way. This was the first road in LA specifically designed for cars to get from one place to another fast. It had nine bridges crossing over it for the regular street traffic, and it opened, it was either April 15th or 20th in 19. 1935. It cost $877,000. It was known as the airline route. Ooh. And when it opened, it had no center divider, which led to 77 oh. injuries in the first three years That's before so they finally funny. put in a steel divider. Because if you thought enough to have, hey, maybe yeah. we should have a super fast road, you don't then think, maybe we should have safety on yeah. it. Yeah. I think about the early years of driving a lot when you see old footage of just like crisscrossing traffic. Like yeah. how many years before there was a turn lane or a signal or well, aren't, anything, aren't like there lines st- in the road? Aren't there stories of people that... Jumping out of the way when that guy shot out in the first movie or when the train pulled into the station, they all jumped out of the way. When when that old cowboy from the Gene Autry Museum (laughs) shot at that train that was coming at him from the other screen in the next theater. (laughs) There's stories of just people that like cars were going like three miles per hour and someone's just standing in the middle of the road not believing what they're seeing and a three mile per hour car comes and runs them over because they can't move. (laughs) What I'm trying to say is people were stupid back then. They're stupid now. This road was widened in the 40s to make more room and it was renamed the Ramona Freeway, but it's not really there anymore but the 10 does go along part of where it used to be so this was a start but it was still a long way from what we have now in 1937 the automobile club of southern california made their own report on the future of motorways that included interesting new ideas like on and off ramps and elaborate cloverleaf shaped interchanges of different motorways intersecting and elevated roads above the regular traffic that went straight through buildings in the city i want to drive to the ninth floor please (laughs) you drive straight to your cubicle (laughs) with new ideas like these the next huge step was taken towards the car deep impact that we live in today Uh, that's a joke that we almost used in the intro but then we decided "Mm, let's do something about drugs (laughs) this next leap something of an evolutionary leap it's as if the city touched the monolith and (laughs) the next thing was called the arroyo seco parkway (sighs) plans for this were around since 1911 but those plans were a literal parkway which was a string of grass parks connecting elysian park to highland park maybe the first interesting thing i remember learning about la history was in an urban planning class i took here at csun and somebody was yeah it was just saying yeah it's called a parkway that's why you're supposed to go 30 miles an hour because they didn't have cars that went 90 miles per hour you're supposed to go really slow and be like ooh, ah, yeah ooh. well you're ruining you're ruining oh. can we redact that can, <laughs> can someone please come edit the film here <laughs> can we cut that splice splice <laughs> even beyond this being just a pretty road like you were talking about it yeah. was literally just parks like a long park that you would walk down yeah. teddy roosevelt was a huge plan of this and he said it would have been one of the greatest parks in the world but the city had already turned its back on trying to be beautiful at that <laughs> point and in the 30s we needed wide open roads so construct yeah. no time for prettiness construction began march 22nd 1938 since the road was going to connect la to pasadena presiding over the opening ceremony of the construction was rose queen cheryl walker who pulled the lever on the steam shovel to begin construction it was paid for by a joint effort from the city of la the state of california some gas taxes, the WPA and the PWA and TWA got involved. (laughs) It was a big uh, WPA project, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one of those depression era sort of let's get get America back to work. (laughs) But who can afford cars? Uh, (laughs) Not these boys. (laughs) In depression era Los Angeles, road drives you. (laughs) In charge of the project were two men named Spencer V. Cortelieu and A.D. Griffin and was slowly built and opened in three separate states.
stages. That's the thing with all of these roadways. I really wanted to be like, it started this day and it opened this Open, day. Yeah. But no, it was nothing was finished in one stretch. We've got six exits. Yeah. It took you eight miles and yeah. four and years. You to get back yeah. on the streets <laughs> and then take a turn and then get on this other road that'll eventually connect when your children are yeah. born. I'm sure all of that was just traffic. People yeah. having the same thought as you. Yeah. It's been just a nightmare. <laughs> Everybody just rear-ending each other because <laughs> they didn't realize the freeway's not built yet. <laughs> Everything was just built in sections because it took so long that you couldn't just leave huge parts of the city closed off to traffic yeah. when it was being built. So like we said, it would just be just go fast and then slow down and then go fast <laughs> and then slow down again. The first section here opened in 1940. It went six miles from Glen Arm Street in Pasadena Avenue, yeah. to Avenue 22. So it didn't even actually connect downtown LA yet. It stopped yeah. just before the river. Like Highland Park, yeah. A little further, maybe. Ooh, Glass L Park, are you familiar with that? This route actually followed the one that was originally proposed in that traffic plan from 1924. Okay. So that had a lot of impact on the rest of the future of planning. The opening ceremony had a fake reenactment of the land being passed from people who weren't Native Americans pretending to be Native Americans, passing the land to the LA government, and a new Rose Queen was present named Sally Stanton. Do you know that the actors there dressed in Native American Hollywood costume wear, they sat cross-legged, which is what they call Indian style, mm -hmm. and passed a peace pipe between mm. them to the city government. Did they say that this is a highway? And <laughs> yeah, I read that and I thought, all of this is about California conquest. <laughs> I was reading another thing, not to deter too much of what you're doing. Mm. Uh, redacted, 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 redacted. There's so many weird things like that where you, it's like, oh, it's a cute idea, but then if you read them into it more, you're like, they're just like passing the buck and cutifying all the stuff that that's happened before. Yeah. The editors of the publication, California Highways and Public Works, which was a publication just about freeways and transportation stuff, they paid homage in an editorial where they commemorated California's first pioneers. You want to guess who it was? It was Junipero Serra, Portola, and Baptista de Anza. All Spaniards. Yeah. 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 All, right. <laughs> All this is about California Are you conquest. surprised? <laughs> no, I'm just upset. Be glad that they didn't take credit for them being the first people there. <laughs> that it was an appropriation festival and then it got open. <laughs> so Pasadena had a lot to say, both good and bad, about this new road being opened, which... Yeah, what did Pasadena have to say about this? Um, no. <laughs> uh, on the one hand, there were groups like Preferred Pasadena, felt it would encourage people who work downtown to buy homes in Pasadena. So yeah. they wanted this. At the time, people would work downtown and they would live west of downtown because there were, you know, it was easy easier to get there, but this group was marketing Pasadena saying live east instead of west to have a better commute and avoid the unpleasantness of having the blinding sun in your face both ways to and from work. Okay, it, that's, that's science. It, it's, that's science. Yeah. But they were dressed like Native Americans when they <laughs> said it. Then on the other hand were groups like the Pasadena Park Protection Association who felt the road would make things ugly and polluted and would displace people, which mm -hmm. is a viewpoint Greg will be getting into later because bleeding heart liberal is gonna... <laughs> I just want to look like one of the background characters in that scene from Peter Pan, yeah. the cartoon. <laughs> Well, Say you're a codfish. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. So nothing could stop this yeah. road, and it was opened anyway. It came complete with a center divider, and it had long, smooth curves Hell yeah. to accommodate the high speeds of the modern automobile, like you were saying, so they wouldn't go flying off the road when the road turned. That being said, there was no speed limit on the road at first because... Cars couldn't go that fast exactly. to break the law. It, there, or whatever. These law. aren't dangerous. Do whatever yeah. you want. There were no grade crossings for cross traffic or trolleys to stop for, and they had nice native plants planted along it so they could advertise it as a pleasure road. Road. It's very nice. It I'm is. sure then it was even nicer. But uh, it's, it's, we'll get to, into how scary it is. It cost a little over a million dollars to okay. build it, and it became the new path of Route 66 and cut down the travel time from Pasadena to downtown LA from 27 minutes to 12 minutes. That's pretty good. Which is why after just two months of being open, it already had major traffic problems. <laughs> <laughs> I got this new road that nobody knows about. <laughs> yeah. There were just too many cars, and it wasn't yeah. until 1943 when 2.2 more miles were added to it, taking it through Elysian Park and the four Figueroa Street tunnels, which has been built in 1931. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. To they are day, nice tunnels. Beautiful. Yeah, and that's why I, I always wondered, like, what is this weird? It almost looks like there's a tiny little road a running little onto here. here. There's a little road Rolled down here. Can we take this little road? <laughs> that same year, 1943, they banned trucks and buses from taking it to try to clear up some of the congestion. It didn't work. The third section of this road wasn't done until a decade later, but we'll get to that a little later. But meanwhile, this road, depending on how exactly you define a freeway, is considered by many to be the first freeway in the United States. That's cool. It depends how you define a freeway, though. Some, some like... 
Some like it hot. Uh, some, some like to say it was only the first freeway in the Western United States right. because, like I said, there was some stuff in like New York and Chicago. Chicago yeah. But if you look at what it was with the curves and the signals for slower traffic, just look at its curves. It, they're undeniable. Just put your hand on the curves. <laughs> I love my curvy freeway. <laughs> it had signals for slower traffic to stay to the right and things like that. It was more like a modern freeway than what was on the East Coast. So we could argue this was the first one. It may not have been the first of this concept, but it was definitely the biggest and it was definitely the most important. Impressive, and it was definitely the first limited access high speed state highway without a toll in the entire country. So it was a free way to drive. I'm in. All Are you pitching to me right now? $500,000 for 10%. <laughs> but you got to tell me now. You got to tell, you me, gotta tell me now. Uh, Mr. Wonderful taught me that. <laughs> this was a step towards the future and all the freeways that came after it in LA, California, the United States, and then the whole world were modeled after the Arroyo Seco Parkway. So that it was it was the nut. It was yeah. the seed that started everything. Everything wish, grew out of it. I wish they kept the angles of the off ramps and everyone replicated that yeah That's i, w- I, really I wish the off ramps were shorter than the length of a modern car i wish the <laughs> on ramp was a literal stop sign where you're completely stopped and then you have to go yep. almost 90 degrees yep. and to you, catch you up. get in at the fast lane <laughs> you back out of your driveway and somehow you're in the carpool lane that's what i wish all freeways were like for this reason that's for this reason i'm out i also learned that I'm from also that's why it's been designated a state scenic highway a national scenic byway a historical engineering landmark by the american society of civil engineers and a national historic landmark that freeway is which is weird yeah the freeway it's, is it's a, a national yeah. historic <laughs> landmark you should see the uh, parking lot of america it's beautiful that was a long time ago though yeah. let's get into what it is like today it today is more accurately labeled as a death trap <laughs> the curves i was talking about were only meant to handle speeds of up to 55 miles per hour and cars are like you said a lot faster so there have been a lot of deaths on this road mm-hmm. over the years that's not to mention the dangerously short on and off ramps that yeah. nowhere near long enough to safely get on and off at modern speeds a lot of those don't even have lights there's just stop yeah. signs there's just like someone's driveway that's a hard curve and they're yeah. like oh i'm supposed to get off here and then you're suddenly like in trees the road was designed for twenty-seven thousand cars a day and now has over 122,000 cars a day on november 16th 1954 its name was changed to the pasadena freeway and became an extension of the 110 but on december 30th 2010 it was renamed the royal seco parkway preserve the history yeah that same year plans were put in place to make the road safer with better lighting and reflectors and some making it a little curvier Ooh. <laughs> mm, yes, yes. It's a thick road. <laughs> I've seen cars flip over. I've seen on cars it. too. Really? You've seen a car flip? Yeah, I've seen cars flip. I've seen cars hit the railings on both the shoulder and the it's, divider. It's like Mario Kart. It is a lot like Mario Kart. It's yeah, not it's pretty safe. scary. It's I don't, not a safe road. I am pretty comfortable texting and driving. I won't do it on those Arroyo Seco. By the way, this beams out straight to the police station. <laughs> so I'm glad you said that. Uh, and cut. <laughs> There's even been talks of lowering the speed limit on that road, even lower than it is, which I think it is 55. It might be a little bit you lower. You can't drive 55. Anymore. Yeah, tell Sammy Hagar. But the Arroyo Seco was just taking care of one part of the city that was connecting yeah. Pasadena. That was the, the Upper East Side. By the 1940s, the city had a few isolated high speed roads like this, but there was no cohesive network, which was the dream. That was the end game. And in 1943, the WPA and PWA ended. So it looked like there was this was going to stay a dream because yeah. there wasn't anybody to pay for it because yeah. the war was on and freeways had to be turned into bullets. <laughs> it wasn't until after the war in 1947 that the Collier Burns. Highway Act was passed that put a 1.5 cent tax on gas to pay for new freeways. This was an LA's freeway frenzy started. Yeah. You want to keep talking? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start singing Powerhouse from Raymond Scott. <laughs> they laid a brick. And then they laid another one. Brick freeway. <laughs> cobblestone freeways they had back then. So they laid out a master plan for a connected system of freeways across the city in 1947. Add on top of that, just six years later, the gas tax was raised even higher. And then in 1956, the Federal Aid Highway Act was passed, partly to create a system of roads for people to evacuate major cities in case of a nuclear attack. You need needed a quick way out, which doesn't exist anymore. And by the late 1950s, California was building over 150 miles of freeway a year. Boy, they wanted it. They were thirsty for (laughs) it. So with that context, let's take it back to the second freeway ever built in Los Angeles. They had reasonably connected the rich east part of LA to downtown, but there was still no quick way to get to and from Hollywood and then from there to the valley. Mm -hmm. You couldn't do it. Who would want to? (laughs) Did I describe Studio City accurately enough to you? (laughs) What am I missing here? I Character said it was actors, quaint. Greg. <laughs> Bob Hoskins, Greg. Bob. 
Did I mention that guy who's in Blade Runner, the guy who sells him the eyeballs or whatever? Did I mention that guy? So since 1769, <laughs> there had been the El Camino Real as was stamped down yeah. by Gaspar de Portola. So that went through what is now and was still in his time, Hollywood. Since 1769, the El Camino Real went through Hollywood in the Valley. And in 1926, yeah. that road was renamed US Highway 101. It had been paved and improved over the years to accommodate the changing transportation technology, but it wasn't a freeway yeah. yet. Plans had been in place since 1924 from that document again yeah. for something like that but it wasn't until the late 30s that the first section of this plan was realized with the construction of the Kawanga Pass freeway and that's that little road that little road up there right no it that's was the that. freeway oh that was the freeway it wasn't yeah. that little road no that, that little road. road was the El Camino Real oh duh okay but the it. freeway is the freeway, the freeway. I, I would have said the Kawanga Pass little road <laughs> don't you, don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this on air. Well, then say that you like Studio City. <laughs> say it in front of everybody. I need you to say it. Say you're a codfish, and then say you like Studio <laughs> City. <laughs> you know, like Bob Hoskins, the guy who was in Hook. He lives there, okay? Say you're a codfish. Don't try to stop me, Smee, okay? <laughs> TikTok. TikTok, Daniel. TikTok. <laughs> this road carved out the Kawanga Pass route that Portola had used and transformed it from a small winding road and turned it into an eight-lane highway complete with a Pacific Electric red car track going mm-hmm. straight down the middle. We've talked about that road before. Yeah, that it, it cost that, that road. That, rolled. that little road. <laughs> it cost $1.5 million and the first mile opened on June 15th, 1940. Every They just want an excuse to dress up like Native Americans and have a party. <laughs> have we done 10 more feet? I think I'd really like to try my moccasins again. <laughs> I really feel like me in this. I'm 178th fake Native <laughs> American, you know. So the first mile opened June 15th, 1940, complete with a celebration attended by Fletcher Bowron. Oh, okay. Uh, he the was just like a Native American. And then Gene Autry, who was dressed as a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> so there's G- Fletcher Bowron, Gene Autry, and a procession of horses, stagecoaches, and old cars driving down to bid farewell to the past. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> Let's all bid Iwuga to the past. <laughs> now, you might notice that this road actually opened a little bit before the Arroyo Seco Parkway, and it's a pretty close approximation of what a freeway is. And it isn't given that recognition by history, even though a lot of people do consider this to be the first freeway, yeah. since Arroyo Seco is more of a parkway. But yeah. I'm, I'm confused. Let's keep going. Nobody likes it because it's ugly. And yeah. The it does, wasn't there yet, so yeah. what's to look at? <laughs> There's so many like different def- sliding definitions of what a freeway is yeah. and who came first. Uh, who's Second first? Yeah. Is the question. Why can't we all just come together and ask the real question who's on first <laughs> and also i have another question will you still need me will you still feed me or, <laughs> when i'm on first when, when it's me who's on first will you still need me when i'm driving 64 <laughs> asking of the arroyo seco parkway answer no, no. <laughs> the coenga pass freeway was yet another disconnected stretch of high speed road so you'd yep. be you know dirt road oh my god I'm oh my going god so I, need, fast. I need to be going really they fast like, right now they were like people movers at the airport like you're walking and all of a sudden you're walking really fast and yeah. then you're walking slow again that's how at the freeway Freeway system was like back then. It's part of Mario Kart where you hit the the ramp when it has all the lighty arrows, and suddenly your Bowser, <laughs> Fletcher Bowser, is there. <laughs> Fletcher Bowser, and he's the big boss. <laughs> he's dressed like Toad, and everyone finds it appropriating and offensive. So it had to be connected to downtown, this tiny stretch of road, and the Arroyo Seco Parkway also, and that meant going through Hollywood. There was not yet a road through Hollywood. It was in the past. It was downtown, but there's a very wide, rich, populated, popular area in between those two places. A construction on this was delayed again because of the war because speed limits had to be turned into bullets but in 1946 it moved full force and there was a lot of resistance to this because this was the first time a freeway was being constructed where people live where people lived a densely populated area and it was a historic and rich Mm -hmm. need i say again a rich part rich in history and rich in money (laughs) in that part of the city so they had to navigate between they couldn't be too close to the ktv station because it would be too loud they had to go around the hall Hollywood Presbyterian Church it's because they needed God. How wonderful to accommodate people. <laughs> hey, to if you're rich in history, in in his, his, <laughs> if you're rich in historical sense, they couldn't be too close to the Hollywood Bowl. Did you talk about Rudolph Valentino's house? I'll talk about it right now. They get rid of his and Charlie Chaplin's house in the construction. Yeah, I, I just had that his Falcons layer. I didn't know about Charlie Chaplin's yeah, house. Yeah, they would knock both their houses down. It was very quiet when they knocked it. Down. <laughs> <laughs> it was very comical when it fell down. You know that scene in the Buster Keaton movie where the house falls on him and he falls through the window? That was a freeway coming through. <laughs> and that was his real house. That was news footage. That was, his, that was a 
documentary. <laughs> Always <laughs> on that guy. Always on. Always on, even when he was homeless. <laughs> There's some of the controversy. Two of the agents working on it got sent to prison for conspiring with real estate firms to inflate home prices along the new route. So yep. people were trying to profit off of this. This one was a lot harder to make than the first one, but because the first one had already happened, they learned from the mistakes of the Arroyo Seco yeah, they Parkway. Learned. And they tailored this one to a more modern, faster lifestyle. It took eight years for this to be completed and opened on April 15th, 1954. This time, Bob Hope. Guess how he was dressed. <laughs> he cut a strip of movie film at the ceremony. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. That's I bet cute. he said a bunch of stuff that I don't get. And he wasn't as funny as everyone tells me he was. But. He, cut, he cut it with his nose. His nose went first. <laughs> he said in his speech that he's glad it's open, but he'll miss the detours he'd have to take to get to his house in the valley because Seattle was so nice that time of year. It's funny. You get that? I get. Oh, I get it. You want to look at a map? Or do you still <laughs> think the earth is flat? <laughs> it's not that it's flat. Okay, it's that it's super circular. I, I believe in circular. quite the opposite. <laughs> the earth is a line. It's not flat. It's a circular line. So it connected from downtown to, it seems, in the valley. They went to Vineland Avenue in North. North Hollywood. Okay. And a year after it opened, it had 183,000 cars on it a day, which was twice the amount it was meant to handle a yep. year after it was oh open. God. Bob Hope dipped his head back in to say that it was the biggest parking lot in the world. Ah, you get that? The uh, world, which is round. Oh, I thought the cars were round. Wait, I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> it's okay. I don't get Bob Hope. I, I believe in flat wheels. I'm a flat <laughs> wheeler. So since then, it's been widened and its tentacles have spread to connect yeah. to other parts of the city with the 170, the 134 opening in 1968, connecting it to the 5. On September 5th, 19. 56, they began construction on the Ventura Freeway, which would run from Sepulveda to the edge of LA County city limits on the west. This was completed in 1960, but in 1959, they extended that to connect to the end of the Hollywood Freeway going east, making the entire thing the 101, even though it has two pet names, Hollywood Freeway until the Hollywood Split, which is where the 101, 134, and 170 meet mm. in North Hollywood. And then it's from then on, it's the Ventura, Ventura Freeway. Highway. Ventura Freeway. Ventura You're highway. thinking of Tom Petty. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of the Eagles. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah. Well, no, no. What is a free, oh, so he says Ventura Boulevard, but he says it's yeah. a freeway in Reseda, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is also, the, everyone's confusing me. Everyone has to stop singing about these roads because it's very confusing Can we to all me. just agree what's a freeway and what's a road? Can we just agree so that there's vampires in Encino or whatever Tom Petty was afraid of? So this means that the 101 now runs from the East LA Interchange and you can take it as far north as a channel in Washington that borders Canada. So Pretty you can cool. start in East LA and drive to Canada on the same road and it'll take you that's, like uh, 27 minutes. That's the inspiring story of people who growing up in East LA who yeah. think they'll never get out. Is that they can- oh, I'll get out. I'll okay. go all the way to a channel in Washington that borders Canada. You watch. So this is the long- You're not going anywhere. <laughs> You're going on the 134, which only goes like two miles. So this is the longest freeway in California is the 101. It's kind of the freeway of Los Angeles as it covers most of the major parts of the city. You know, it's... It is the main artery sort of thing. Yeah. Everything else is just going to take you to boring parts. The 101 will take me home. If it doesn't take me home, it's boring. (laughs) It's lined, of course, with replica mission bells to commemorate its past as the El Camino Real. Which it wasn't. Parts of it were. It's weird because the El Camino Reals kind of dip on, like some are on the actual freeway, some are just on streets. So they do kind of stick to the route I could see it I don't think you can I and think I, that everyone's a liar except for me I think that I'm the most honest person in the history of this city I wish that the Eagles sang a song about the El Camino Rio <laughs> you know they probably did the first of these bells were put up in 1906 and they're modeled after the church bells at Olvera Street at the church there right. they're on poles that are meant to look like shepherd staffs oh okay that's it so it's kind of religious I don't really like it anymore I think I'm going to protest <laughs> take, s- them take them down take them down lock them up I know some statues in California need to come down but you're talking about those they're spaced about one to two miles apart. In the 50s, if you sped on the Hollywood freeway, this, these are just some random facts about the Hollywood yeah. freeway. In the 50s, if you sped on it, you had to spend five five years in jail, I wrote. Five days in jail. Oh, okay. But you would have to go to jail That's for speeding. Weird. What is this, Mayberry? $10 <laughs> or five days in jail. Actually, it was five years in jail. <laughs> that was their plan to eliminate traffic. If you sped, you go to jail for five years until okay. they could rebuild the freeway. The problem is cars and the roads, right? So if we do something with the drivers. If we can incarcerate everybody. <laughs> incarcerate? <laughs> That'll be the title that's, of the episode. That's prison for cars. Yeah. In 1958, uh, also on the Hollywood freeway, a truck full of flammable gas tipped over on it and it was all in flames and a young aspiring actress ran onto the road in a bathing suit to pose for all the news photographers. I'm waiting for And that and that and actress that, was Heather Locklear. That, that actress, Bob Hoskins. <laughs> One time a truck full of BBs opened up and spilled on the road so all the cars tried to dry over it and they were that's slipping funny. over again like Mario Kart. That's, they were all sliding <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> but James Bond got away. The driver of that truck, Bob Hoskins. In the- Hoskins. <laughs> Bond Hoskins. 
<laughs> in the 80s, a Brinks truck opened oh. and spilled $7,000 worth Yikes. of quarters on the road. Yikes. That driver, <laughs> <laughs> supposedly in the 70s, a bunch of chickens fell off of a truck and their descendants can still be seen in the bushes along the road. But how about the west side? Let's talk about how is the how are we going to get to and from the west side? I want to see the beach. Well, we're not going that west. The city needed a 405. Originally, it was called the 7 that ran basically along the same path it is today. But in 1957, they started turning sections of that into the high-speed freeways, but they weren't connected again. But something had to be done about this giant mountain in the middle that was preventing a high-speed connection from the valley to the west side. Yeah. Sepulveda Canyon had been used by the natives for centuries, and eventually it was used. It was really used for the first time by Portola and the Spanish. <laughs> then in 1875, Isaac Lankersham and Isaac Newton Van Nuys, which was his name, widened it. <laughs> which it's even weirder knowing that Van Nuys is a place to think like, why did you just mashing up all these different mm. names? I'm Isaac Newton Reseda. I'm Isaac Newton Parthenia. I'm Nicholas Copernicus Chatsworth. <laughs> so they widened it to make it safer for wagons with goods to connect from the ships coming in at Santa Monica Pier to the valley. But yeah. then this road died when the pier moved down to San Pedro. But the valley kept booming, meanwhile, in the 1920s. So in the 1920s, they were forced to reopen this dangerous road because the only two other ways into the valley, which were the Cahuenga Pass and San Fernando Road going around Glendale, yeah. they, they were overwhelmed. It was too much. They needed to poke another hole in that, let some of the air out. Yeah. The reopening came in the form of the 50-mile Sepulveda Boulevard that ran from San Fernando to Long Beach. Construction started in 1929 and it opened just a year later with the dedication of the Sepulveda Tunnel, which is right by the Skirball mm -hmm. Center. And of yeah. course, there was already too much traffic for it to <laughs> handle. In the 50s alone, 65 people died driving through Sepulveda yeah. Canyon on Sepulveda. You want to make an omelet? You got to drive down Sepulveda. <laughs> what are you getting at? <laughs> there had to be a new way to get through this canyon to connect the seven on either side of it. So it was, yeah. it was these two kind of high speed roads, but there's a mountain With in the, the middle. Right, yeah. yeah. People kept driving into the side of the mountain. <laughs> We're going to figure this out. <laughs> we'll get it right. I promise. <laughs> if we drive fast enough, we can go over, over the, the mountain. mountain. She'll be coming around the mountain. <laughs> Uh, you want to make an omelet, don't you? <laughs> the only way turned out to be what they called to get through this mountain, they called it the Big Cut, which was the carving out of the Sepulveda Pass. This started in August 1960 and meant digging out 13 million cubic yards of debris right down the middle of the Sepulveda yeah. Pass there. They made the canyon 1,800 feet wide and 260 feet deep, reinforced with 6 million pounds of steel and how to build huge retaining walls to keep oh the mountainsides from collapsing yeah. on themselves. They also had to realign the natural drainage of the mountain so that it wouldn't all slide away. <laughs> Again, this is like, we'd take it all for granted. Yeah. It opened up on December 21st, 1962 with eight lanes, and it was the most expensive California highway project ever done, costing $20 million, and there was a traffic jam on the first day. Oh my <laughs> god, of course. Like, that's its reputation. Like, the 405 yeah. is a dirty word. Yeah, it does have the worst reputation, probably, yeah. but I don't think, I think there's worse freeways to be on, but it does have the worst reputation. Yeah. The first day also saw its first speeding ticket. It was given to a guy named Ron Tampkin. That's on he, record. He's still in jail. Yeah. <laughs> this project. You had to pay for the whole project. <laughs> First, the speed pays $20 million. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? This project has been compared to being LA's Brooklyn Bridge and that it connected the rest of LA to the suburbs of the valley, like right. how the Brooklyn Bridge connected Manhattan to the suburbs of Brooklyn. I knew that. I know that. I know how the uh, Brock, Brooklyn, Broccoli Bridge. <laughs> Brooklyn. The Broccoli Bridge. The Bagel was, uh, Bridge. Uh, <laughs> I know how it, uh, it was uh, in a Beastie Boy song, I believe. So yeah, I'm pretty knowledgeable Where about Where Broccoli at? Where Broccoli at? <laughs> I get it. It opened up the entire Western Valley to the rest of the city. In 1963, it was officially renamed the 405 and had over 100,000 cars going through that canyon daily. 2011 saw the Carmageddon okay. as uh, we are lucky we, to survive. Yeah. Where were you? I did not ascend on Carmageddon. <laughs> I was not one of the chosen. As God reached his hand out and he said, who's coming with me? God reached his hand down and wagged his finger at me. <laughs> this was part of a five-year widening project that cost $1.1 billion. It feels like it did nothing. Its interchange with the 101 is regularly ranked in the top one to three words intersections mm -hmm, in the country. Curve, a day after I read that, a propane tank tipped over on it and closed the whole thing <laughs> down. Also regularly on this list is the interchanges of the 405 to the 10, the 10 to the 5, and the 405 to the 605. That's three interchanges involving the 405 that have the reputation as being the worst interchanges in the country. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The 405 now goes from the 5 in the North Valley all the way down to the 5 in Orange County, which is why for no reason at all it's known as the San Diego Freeway. Yeah, that's stupid. It doesn't make sense. 
that's it must have meant something it. else back then mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> we made it how about we rename it the daniel freeway <laughs> the linchpins and all this all that we're talking about are the interchanges that make this system an actual system okay, are you going to talk about the stack i am going to talk about the hell stack. hell yeah bro we've talked about bra, a few brother 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 we've talked about a few of the one of the major ones the east la interchange mm-hmm. where the 10 the 5 the 60 and the 101 meet but the iconic well, live here the, I, <laughs> if you add all those number up that's how many families were displaced <laughs> <laughs> the iconic interchange of the city, though, it's known as the four level or the stack. Up to the 40s, most freeway interchanges were cloverleaf style, but that was slow and it caused traffic jams. And even though at this point they must have realized that nothing was ever going to help, LA couldn't have more slow interchanges. Yeah. So they brought in a guy named WH Irish to design <laughs> the WH. Hi, I'm WH Stereotype. They brought him in to design what became at that time the most expensive freeway project in the country, this $5.5 million 101 to 110 interchange. It's called the four level because it has four levels of cars going in all both directions for both those freeways stacked on top of each other to try to ease congestion. It didn't work. <laughs> it's located on the site of LA's old gallows. It was proposed on April April 22nd, 1944, and were completed in 1949, but it couldn't be used until September 22nd, 1953. So it just sat for, what is that, four years? Because the freeways it was designed to link together weren't built yet. <laughs> so it was just sitting there waiting for everything yeah. to come to it. To finish up the Arroyo Seco story, this was the final section of that to be completed. Oh, right. So now via the stack, the Arroyo Seco was complete and could now link up to the Hollywood, the Harbor, the Golden State Freeway. So yeah. the city was now kind of connected because of the stack. The stack itself is now an icon of the car culture of LA. It holds almost 500,000 cars a day, and it's been copied by cities all over the world. It's also the only interchange around that's a certified civil engineering landmark by the Society of Civil Engineers. But these are just a select few. These are just some freeways yeah. in the city. There's also the 118, which was started in 1968. The last section, which is the part between Balboa and Tampa, yeah. opened in either 1981 or 82. There's the 10, which used to be called the Christopher Columbus Transcontinental Highway, which can take you from Santa Monica Monica to Jacksonville, Florida, uh-huh. which is the dream of every young kid in Santa Monica. Yeah. You know what? I want the exact opposite of this. <laughs> There's, of course, the five, which can take you mm-hmm. from Mexico to Canada, which is the only interstate highway to do that. Yeah. There's the 710, which was originally called the Los Angeles River Freeway and was planned, built, and paid for by the city of Long Beach alone. With really? the, the plan of it was supposed to be used to take goods from the manufacturing area in Southeast LA to the ports of Long Beach and San Pedro. But nowadays, it's even more important as the link between those two ports which are the two busiest ports in the mm-hmm. country and getting the cargo in from those ships to the rest of the country via the 710. So that's a really important yeah. road. That's one of the worst freeways I've been on. If you go on too early in the morning, there's just all those trucks yeah. and everyone's it's, going 20 miles per hour. It's meant for trucks. It's yeah. not meant for passenger cars. <laughs> just become a trucker. It's the quickest way to get there. Construction on that started in 1951, but it didn't open until 1965 because of protests. Yeah. It was meant to run all the way to Pasadena, but Pasadena residents said no because of the trucks. It ends in Alhambra. Alhambra, it right? ends at like Alhambra by the recycling plant. Yep, and then it connects to the ten because Pasadena did not want a bunch of trucks going Funny. through. Pasadena is prissy. Go ahead, sorry. Pasadena, you're a prude. You're a prude. Say you're a codfish. <laughs> Aside from freeways, there's things called there's state routes, which aren't quite freeways, but they just kind of connect between freeways. Like the 134 is a state route. Okay. Then there's something like the Angeles Crest Highway, which also isn't a freeway, but it kind of is. That's is like the 210 too. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It was started the one that goes into Echo Park. Uh, no above that into the the oh. forest, the Angeles. Uh, into the woods over the river and into the woods (laughs) uh, when I'm 64 it was started in 1929 and it took 27 years and (laughs) countless homeless men Chinese people and prisoners from San Quentin to blast through the mountains to make the Angeles Crest Highway this is now known as the 2 but it connects to State Route 2 also known as the Glendale Freeway which you're talking about even though it's a state route and not a freeway again I'm confused I don't understand any of this the best count I got was that LA County has 9 freeways officially freeways the 510 101 105 110 210 405 605 and 10 those are our freeways then there's 29 state routes giving the city 38 of these types of super fast roads around la so around la there's about 900 miles combined of freeway and highway crisscrossing all of this but all booms and frenzies that don't really fix the problem but just barely avert crisis must end. The exact roots of all these roads have been slightly tweaked and widened over the years, but the construction started slowing down in the 60s and 70s. And 1959 was the California Freeway System Plan that called for 12,248 miles of freeway all across California. But by 1975, that plan was abandoned because they just ran out of money. Uh, 
That, <laughs> that sounds like something that would happen when you have a crazy plan like that. <laughs> the higher speed of cars meant freeways would need more room to curve smoothly so people wouldn't go flying off the sides and that meant more land. And by the 60s, LA was becoming so developed and so densely yeah. populated that it would have caused multiple fortunes to pay for what had to be done to build new freeways. And it would have caused a minor civil war if that more many people had to be uprooted yeah. for new freeways. Land value was going up and people weren't voting to approve new taxes to pay for this because public opinion had shifted mm-hmm. so strongly strongly against freeways, as you'll get into. By 1980, each mile of freeway in LA would have cost $16.7 million for one mile of freeway. The last freeway to be opened in LA was the 105. It finally opened in 1993 and caused so much fighting and uproar and had so many delays that it cost $2.2 billion to make it, which was the most expensive road ever built in the (laughs) United States. There were plans for several more roads that never panned out. There were supposed to be the Whitnall Parkway that would connect Burbank to Chatsworth. Yeah. The Crenshaw Parkway, which would connect Hollywood to Inglewood via La Brea. In 1949, they proposed the Laurel Canyon Freeway to connect the 101 to the 405, but going north and south through Laurel Canyon, Highland, La Brea, and La Cienega. They built a tiny stretch of it around La Cienega and Slauson near Pans, which is why okay. that little stretch of road where you oh, kind of go near yeah. Seas Candy. It's like a, it's it, like a highway. It's like a, it was. <laughs> they built, That was supposed to be like the first part connecting for the Laurel Canyon Freeway. I always wonder about that. It's weird. There was the Slauson Freeway in the 50s, which was supposed to connect the 90 in Marina Del Rey to the 90 in Anaheim. So instead, that 90 just ends. In 1964, they proposed a Beverly Hills Freeway, mm, which could, one. It would connect. Yeah, it would connect the 101 to the 405 between Santa Monica and Melrose. So that got shut down real quick. Yeah, that's why the two ends in Echo Park and picks back up in East Hollywood, because that whole area was kind of set aside as a potential interchange for the Beverly Hills Freeway. Yeah. <laughs> there was You would have been displaced. There were also talks of connecting the 710 to the 210 via an underground tunnel, which would have been the longest of that kind oh. of tunnel in California, but it would have cost billions of dollars, so yeah. the plan fell apart. There's, no one has to move, the, <laughs> but we're going to be under your house. You might fall into the freeway. <laughs> you know how you say you hate being on the freeway? How about <laughs> above the freeway? <laughs> you can say anything about dropping from above. <laughs> there is one new freeway coming up. It would connect Palmdale and Lancaster to Victorville and Apple Valley, way up north in LA okay. County, going about 63 miles and costing $8 billion, but the cost and the environmental impact it's causing a lot of controversy, so we'll see if that actually happens. Here's my one final piece of trivia that's not really important. The reason people from LA put the word the in front of a freeway, uh, which apparently nobody else does. Uh, do you, because we're the best. Yeah. <laughs> do you know this? No. It's because originally all of our freeways had descriptive names like the San Bernardino Freeway, the Hollywood Freeway, but eventually the state highway people started giving out numbers to all these roads. And as more roads kept getting built, there was a lot of overlap and repeating numbers. Like the Arroyo Seco Parkway at one point was called Route 6, 66, and 99. So it was three different roads. So in 1964, California cleaned up all of this and gave definitive numbers to all the roads. So by the 70s, the descriptive names were useless and the roads were just numbers. But people in LA were used to saying the goal. Golden State Freeway right. that they just kept the the and referred to it as the five because it was more natural. Yeah. yeah, well, it's a better way to say it. It's a it's a more I don't know cool and efficient. Add yeah. more syllables. Oh yeah, I take five to ten. Shut up. What are you talking about? They're dumb. They're, they don't know. They they're trying to add. That's what they're talking about. <laughs>